first stop on this visit to the Malvern and Abberley Hills Geopark was the Penny Hill Quarry near Martley. This quarry has ceased working, has been backfilled with landfill waste and is now a site for methane extraction. However, a section of the quarry has been kept clear to show off the local geology. The steeply bedded mid Silurian limestone of the Wenlock series was laid down in lagoons, punctuated by patch reefs, indicating that this site was near the distal edge of the reef. Coral, brachiopod and trilobite fossils are present in abundance. After lunch at the Admiral Rodney pub in Martley, the next stop was the Brock Hill Quarry. At Brock Hill, the Silurian country rock has been intruded. The dike here was formed in the Carboniferous period, when material was intruded into the Upper Silurian calcareous clay miles. Much of the volcanic intrusion has been quarried out for aggregate, exposed in a section across the dike structure. The central zone of the dike consists of coarse-grained teschenite. The baked margins of the sedimentary moles have metamorphosed, with horizontal tubules of carbonates, silicates and some small garnets. The tubules mark the passages through which hot gases were vented at the time of the intrusion. The more rapidly cooled, fine-grained margins are almost like basalt. of this igneous material display onion skin weathering when they are exposed. The church at Shelsey Beecham is an example where builders realise that the more resistant old red sandstone is better for building than the softer bronze grove sandstone. Outside of Martley Village near Barrow Hill, two trenches have been cut to expose the underlying geology at the edge of a field. Paul Olver described the section with much enthusiasm. So what we've just been saying, filling in the quarry. Yeah. The locals knew about it because it formed an outcrop in a little mound here in early, what, late 18th century, something like that. And from the late 18th century onwards they started digging it for aggregate more quartz and felspar in this piece than in this diorite. So we get the Nor Northern sort of mixture. But I don't know whether you can see it, there's a junction here. And there's a yellow rock here. Precambrian diorite and Cambrian quartzite material showing shear have been pushed from east to west to ride up over the Silurian deposits and Carboniferous shales. The resulting sequence of rock layers show the movement occurred after the Carboniferous. Our final visit was to Scar Cottage, a disused Bromsgrove Grove sandstone quarry, which now has a house and garden located in it. The Bromsgrove Grove sandstone exposed here was formed by fluvial deposition in an arid climate during the Triassic. The red sandstone at Scar Cottage shows other features of the arid Triassic environment. 
well, probably below this, we've got quite a lot of rocks that are quite rich in lime, older rocks. And therefore, near the water table, we've probably got quite a lot of lime. And this is, in Triassic times, this was coming up through the rocks and crystallizes here. This is capillary action. Mm -hmm. And then this is a surface with the limestone on it. It's a sort of chemical limestone. A day packed with interest in sights came to an end and Paul Olver proved again to be a wonderful guide to the local geology.